I'm Dr. Tom Mather, the Tick Guy from the University of Rhode Island. Take it from the Tick Guy, one little episode is all it takes to get a tick. So these are brown dog ticks, and as ticks go, um, this one is potentially the most annoying to people because once they get into your house, they don't leave necessarily, and they multiply, especially if you have a dog or a cat that can give them a blood meal. Getting rid of brown dog tick infestations is really quite challenging, probably even harder than getting rid of bed bug infestations. They're a little hard to really identify um, in that they're just kind of brown and plain and don't look like much. It's hard to even see the sputum on them unless you have like a microscope. Um, the only thing of note is that whereas some of the other ticks have either long straight mouth parts or short straight mouth parts, this tick has triangular shaped mouth parts. And so if you can look real carefully at the mouse part of this tick, you'll notice this triangular shape to it. Um, that's really characteristic of brown dog ticks. They don't transmit the Lyme disease germ, for sure. And they mostly only transmit pet parasites, like Babesia to dogs and um, other germs that give dogs disease, but not to people so much. Um, in certain parts of the United States, brown dog ticks, though, are associated with Rocky Mountain spotted fever transmission. And in fact, um, probably more people get Rocky Mountain spotted fever from brown dog ticks, especially in the southwestern United States, than people get Rocky Mountain spotted fever from American dog ticks. This tick is um, a real problem for people in it in that it's a semi-tropical tick. It's found all across the world. It moves on pets, like rescue pets, for instance, is a, a good way that you can end up with one or if you kennel your dog when you go on vacation. There are hot spots in um, America for this. Um, anywhere south of Tampa in Florida, anywhere um, south of Dallas in Texas, and um, in and around the Phoenix and Tucson area, the hot spots also on sort of in the San Diego area as well. So if people spend the winter in warm spots like that and then they bring their pet and then they bring their pet home to Wisconsin or um, Pennsylvania or something, they could be moving these ticks because they, they, live, they live with you and your pets. Um, so it's a problem in that regard. There are ticks all across America, all across the world, but they're different types of ticks. Different ticks transmit different germs, and that's why it's so important to be able to determine what type of tick it is. You can know what risk you're at if you know what type of tick it is. We have resources on Tick Encounter that show the types of ticks and where they, where they might be found, but you can always take a clear picture of your tick and for free send it to Tick Spotters, and we'll identify it for you and tell you what germs that you might get from that tick. So, Different ticks transmit different germs. Make sure you know what type of tick that you've encountered.